Welcome to the Abundaculture channel. The Bible provides pathways to abundance. God is pleased when we succeed abundantly and share generously. Abundaculture uses the family homestead as a platform to provide five basic needs. Affordable housing, renewable energy, clean water, healthy food, and safe sanitation. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to check out our Abundaculture.org website and download our free training manual. Hello. Today we're going to talk about water. We've talked about catching water in rain barrels. Today we're going to talk in a little more general terms how you can collect and save water on your homestead. We're going to show you several different ideas and some of these things will not be legal in your area. You'll have to check with your local authorities. There are two great sources of gray water. That's water that could be used again. The definition of gray water is water that has not been contaminated with urine or feces or harsh chemicals. In other words, it's been used but not abused. Two great sources are your bathtub or shower and your washing machine, provided that you're not washing diapers or something with blood in it. Those two sources you can reroute and use to water your yard or your garden if you're careful. We talk about this in the training manual. If you use a special detergent for your laundry, you can use that water right on the plants with no problem, but it does take a special detergent. My producer will indicate how you can get our training manual. So I hope you'll enjoy this. We save a lot of water here and that saves us money and it's just nice not to waste water. God says he makes it rain on the just and the unjust. Well, that takes me in. So we'd like to share with you ways that you can stretch all the water that God has provided for you. Thanks for listening. Keep your hands in the dirt and your eyes on the sky. Today we're going to show you some of the things that we've done to recycle and conserve water here at our little house in the springs. Here you can see our rain barrels. We have another YouTube presentation about how to build those. Just a typical little house here. Show you something about these rain barrels. You can see this is a way that I've connected these two together. So I have one fill tube that's filling two barrels. With this little fixture down here, I can hook up a hose right to here and drain these barrels to wherever I need them. Usually I use these for the garden or for the grass. Another feature that we have here is our SIP planter garden. That's sub-irrigated planters. We have a YouTube presentation about those. And you see all of my garden is planted in these containers. You can learn all about the SIPs in our other presentation. They save anywhere between 50 and 75% on water. Now let's take a look at this rain barrel. This one, I've got a little spigot here, and you can follow the hose around here, and you'll see that it goes right under the house. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Here's an idea that's so simple it's scary. I simply put some dish pans in my sink, this blue one I use for washing the dishes. That water I just put down the drain. And the pink one I use to rinse the dishes as I wash them. And that water has very little detergent in it. So I take that water and take it out to the garden. And with my SIP planters, just that water has been enough to keep most of the SIP planters going. Here we are in the front of the house. And we've got some tricks that we've done here using the rainwater from the roof, too. First, you see it's just a, a standard setup here. Got rain gutters, 
and then the downspout here and this one comes down and I've hooked it to some three inch poly landscaping tube there and what I'm doing I'm watering this plant and two roses so I take that water and I carefully distribute it exactly where it's needed and if we go over here you'll see I've got some of that three inch polyethylene hose now usually I've got it right under the plants right up next to the house so you can't see it but I pulled it out here so you can see how it works and it comes down again right from that downspout and it's connected right here so the first part of the hose is not perforated so we can keep the water away from the house and the foundation and the second part of the hose is perforated so that we can put it on the lawn anywhere that we want it just by moving the hose. Here we have our final downspout coming down and I've got it on an extra piece little extension here that I can swing and take it right over this sidewalk which I'll do right now so when I know the rains coming I can put it down and that directs the water right here and it's hard to see the grade but all of this goes downhill and waters this tree and all the shrubbery here whenever it rains. So we've used every bit of the water coming off of the roof. This house had two sump pumps. They're underneath the house. This place sets on a drainage and when it rains hard, the water flows underground and the sumps pick that up and blast that water into these white pipes. When I got here, they were just throwing the water into a wash here in the grass, which made a soggy place and it wasn't very good for the grass and it certainly was a waste of water. So I did a little rerouting and I'll show you the sumps here in a minute. I'm gonna crawl under the house and show you the sump pumps and how this works. These two pipes come from two separate sumps. One is from the laundry, and one is from the bathtub. And then, in the winter time, I'll just let the water run as it did before, not very much in the winter, and it'll come to these caps, which I can unscrew, and so we won't have any problems with freezing, and what little bit of water we get in the winter will go right onto the grass. I'm going to show you how we hooked up the washing machine here. As most washing machines have, there's a little drain here. And you can see I've written the word black. If I was going to wash diapers or something that was particularly dirty or had blood in it, I would put it in the black hole right there. I would take this hose and I would put it in the black receptacle. Right now you can see it's in the gray receptacle. That's gray water. So that's going to go directly to the sump and from the sump it will be pumped out to the yard typically. I'm underneath the house now and I'm here to show you the sump. This ring here, right down here, that creates a pit. It's a pipe that's closed at the bottom and it has holes court toward the top. You'll see all this gravel here buried all the way around the perimeter of the house under that gravel and in that gravel is a perforated pipe that drains into this sump pit and it's got a little float on it and when the water fills to a certain level the pump kicks on and sends that water in my case I showed you the two white pipes on the side of the house that were attached to garden hoses so I'm sending 
that water out to use to water the yard typically. Now another hose you'll see, you see this green hose, that's the one that was connected to my rain barrel outside. So I can direct the water from the rain barrel right into this sump pit where it's then used to water the yard. If the rain barrels are full and I know I have rain coming, I can direct that water to the pit and use it and have the barrels relatively empty when the rain comes. We'd like to share with you a resource that will be terrific if you're going to try to harvest and conserve rainwater on your property. The book is Rainwater Harvesting for Dry Lands and Beyond by Brad Lancaster. And there are two different books, book one and book two. You'll find that they are full of great ideas, a lot of them that I've shown you today. we do are just grains of sand when these things are touched by the master's hand then our lives turn into mountains in a master plan I would take this hose whoop I would take this hose and I would put it in the black receptacle.